Lift, a comparative study of perioperative and clinical outcomes. Thank you very much. Every other talk is about anterior <coughs> oblique interbody fusion, so I feel a little exotic because I'm exactly not going to talk about the anterior oblique, but about the posterior oblique. We are familiar with the PLIF and TLIF since 1950s and 80s, that TLIF by all standards, uh, by all uh, uh, account is a standard of care as of now, and we in this society, we are trying to think, uh, change that. The anterior approach and lateral approach has been shown to be very uh, beneficial to the patient, so we are familiar with ALIF, oblique lateral interbody fusion, anterior tube psoas, or oblique anterior lumbar interbody fusion. But I'm going to talk about oblique lateral uh, interbody fusion, which, done, which is done in prone position, and the uh, patient practically stays with the entire surgery in the prone position, but we still use the retroperitoneal approach for this. We are familiar with open and uh, MIS approaches, and we know as well as a MIS surgeon that we don't uh, actually um, reattach those muscles that we are uh, detaching in an open surgery, but we don't tell, tell our patient that you know, we are devascularizing actually the uh, bone. Olive uses an uh, approach to the Cambin triangle and with the uh, percutaneous approach that uh, relies on uh, back power or scopic imaging through the entire procedure. The setup is important, but uh, after we done with the normal uh, monitoring probe, we enter the disc space, then we put a K wire, put a dilator, then over the dilator, a, a cannula is placed that is eight millimeter in diameter inside and 10 millimeter in diameter outside. Over that dial, the, the two actually use a series of very smart tools that enable us to do discectomy preparation of the end plate, and then a cannulated conically shaped uh, cage is inserted. The result of this procedure is that we can, with this procedure and some modification, put that cage anteriorly or posteriorly, right or left, and we have been actually being uh, scoliosis, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about scoliosis of cob angle 7 degree, I'm talking about 45 degree scoliosis with significant adjustment of bible and nephroscopic imaging. Here what you see is that the osteophytes are separated. What it means as well that we have restored the foramen to the proper uh, height. We call it physiological slash anatomical uh, decompression. I don't believe there's anything indirect about it. Having said that, the end result is, and the imaging look very similar to peel if the different that we don't destroy all the muscle to get there. Our initial study was based on uh, about 70 uh, patient olives, about 60 patient TLF cohort study, but our landmark studies coming out, are, we are gathering our data with 300 plus so far, we have done 600, but only 300 has been qualified to the follow up for the study. Um, we have been mostly concentrating on the clinical outcome and less on the radiographical outcome, but I'm going to uh, present to you both. And uh, we can show significant improvement in both uh, pain scale and os Compared to uh, any other uh, MIS technique, actually fluoro time goes up, but later with the learning curve comes down, our blood loss is about 10% of the open surgery, so we cut the blood loss to one-tenth of the open surgery. and. Uh, for all account, uh, to my best knowledge, this is the only uh, procedure I'm aware of that cut the surgery time significantly com in comparison to the open surgery. Our uh, time uh, is less than one half of the open tiller, and hospitalization in the initial study, 1.6 days shorter, in the follow-up study, 2.7 days shorter. Learning curve is like any other new technique, 40 cases, uh, I'm sorry, 40 levels or 20 cases, and the complication rate compared to TLF is less, even though considering that many of those patients are learning curve. Now, the question of the fusion has been addressed to independent radiology or reading or the results. With these tools that we are providing, uh, we can achieve interbody fusion. At this point, our results show 98.4%, and even with posterior instrumentation and fusion, where we use specialized tool to roughen the surface of the facet and pack it by, with biologic. Now, after 650 cases, we did not have a, any uh, deep relevant infection, significantly reduced OR time and stay in the hospital. And we had a paper published that shows that uh, adds up to about 2.5 billion annual saving in the US economy. 
and this it doesn't even consider the, the, the loss of productivity that probably going to be 10 times more now. In short, um, we do vulnerable surgery in usually 35 minutes, skin to skin. Patient, most of these patients walk home four hours after their surgery. In, you know, in the study, the hospital stay was reduced 2.7 and our average blood loss is uh, 44 cc. We literally measure the weight of the sponge before and after. That is how we uh, report our blood loss. We have expanded the surgery to thoracic level. I just, in the other room, I gave a talk about the scoliosis correction. And uh, I think uh, if you need more information, four minutes is not enough to give you all the information. Please uh, go to this web pages. Thank you very much. is open for uh, questions now. I guess I'll start off, Dr. Obasi. So actually, we, uh, we actually published a paper on that approach in about 1998 in Spine. The challenge is the disc preparation. And I, you guys obviously have spent a lot of time. I would, I'm very concerned because that was the limiting factor. You're working mm -hmm. through an eight millimeter cannula and it's impossible to get a good, we did a bunch of cadavers, we cut them apart very hard to get new disc preparation, very limited mobility. A lot of your x-rays, the cages are subsided or dug in. Mm -hmm. So I get it. I mean, I think it's a nice approach. I think you guys obviously are dedicated to an experience, but very hard to reproduce because they're very difficult preparing the disc space through an eight millimeter cannula. And as I think shown by your x-rays, hard to get a cage that doesn't, that goes in the exact direction you'd like it to do so well, my up. comment to that is it's very hard to fly an airplane without the wings it's all about the instrumentation it's all about the very specialized tools that enable you to do that now four minutes is a very short time to show me how those instruments work but i think at the end of the day the result they, if i get tell to people show me the cash let me show you my data on the refusion rate, which is 98.4%. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm happy worried to that's your... higher than any other surgery ever described. And this is, there's no ways in my mind you can prepare this like you can with an ALIF or mm -hmm. TLIF and your fusion rates so are higher. I'm inviting, I'm inviting anybody to come and, you know, help us to uh, now uh, validate the data. That is, that is what it is. You know, we go to many places. Um, uh, fortunately, medicine is not about the dogma and you know, some uh, ideology, it's about data. And I'm happy to open those data to uh, send it to any independent radiology to read them. Now, the, we have a hypo hypothesis why the fusion rate is higher. And as we know, the uh, bone gets its blood supply from surrounding tissue. And in the open surgery, we are devascularizing that. And I think that is what we have to concentrate. So is the data valid? Can it be reproduced? And if that's the case, then we can come up with uh, uh, some theories about how it happens. I'm going to ask, uh, uh, did you, Rob, do you have a question? I don't mean to attack, but the, um, the, you showed, I think, four or five hundred seconds of fluoro to do your procedures. Do you have any worry for yourself or your patients with that much fluoroscopy? Fluoroscopy at the beginning for one level was four minutes and 37 seconds, which is pretty high. But uh, after that 40 cases, it comes below two, uh, two minutes. Right now, our one level floor time is about um, one minute and 37 seconds. And you know, yes, it's uh, as any other MIS technique, it has higher rate of, um, uh, higher rate of uh, floor time. But um, I guess, you know, that's another, that's a value for another study. Does it have any consequence for patient? or does it justify? I think that there is lots of work needs to be done there, but the learning curve, I think, is the most important part of it, that to cut that uh, floor time. I wanna make a comment in regards to the last presenter, and we have, in fact, uh, reproduced those studies. Uh, in fact, it is true, you do get about 90% uh, fusion rate uh, with appropriate preparation, there is an exposure to the physician uh, radiologically in terms of x-rays, but uh, having physicians understand that in advance using, a, a, at a minimum, a bi-planar uh, fluoroscopic approach and stepping back from the fluoroscopy uh, would uh, be a good way to uh, avoid that. But there should be no question about the validity of this uh, outcome because we have the same, similar experience. 
uh, I think it should be pointed out that such an output should be limited to one or two level maximum. I would hate to um, make any type of um, validation beyond that. I saw you, you've done multiple levels with this approach. I believe it's more valid for one or two levels. If I may ask, uh, yeah, I think, uh, thank you for the comment. Um, the, the two levels, uh, we have done it from one two level to scoliosis, so you literally from T10 to S1, it becomes exponentially more difficult. I agree with you that the one and two level of this procedure is not the same like three or four or four or five level. It becomes exponentially more difficult. And uh, I, I think that for that reason, those are have to be addressed and the data should be collected for those different groups separately. In our study that we are going to hopefully publish within the next six months, we have it all in one group, but we are going to try to uh, analyze the data for one and two level different than from three level and above. Right, if we have no